silencer, muzzle brake, what's the difference, which one do you prefer? That is exactly what we're gonna address in today's video. So right beside me here, we've got my 20 inch Hauer 6.5 Creedmoor, currently fitted with a DPT suppressor from New Zealand, okay? Now we're gonna be doing some shooting with that and then we're also gonna be switching that out to one of our APW Raptor brakes. And I'm gonna show you guys different positions. We're not gonna be shooting prone one because prone really doesn't show much. You're really gonna see the difference with how the rifle recoils and that's what the main focus of the video is gonna be about, okay? When we're shooting off positions, the other reason we won't be shooting prone is because I left my bipod at home. Yeah. Um, Okay, scared the birds away. Uh, there's a lot of birds in this tree that make it difficult to make videos. So to make things fair between the muzzle brake and the silencer, we will be shooting these monolithic bullets. We actually did a test of these, so I'm just shooting out the extra ones I have. If you wanna watch that video, we just checked if monolithic bullets do damage steel targets. I'm not gonna spoil it for you. Go click here, but open it in a new tab so you can finish this video. And then also we'll be putting a suppressor cover from our friends at Legionnaire onto the suppressor so that we don't have to deal with Mirage. Now that's gonna be in our pros and cons that we'll sort of summarize at the end of this video. So what I'm gonna do, we're gonna jump over to the shooting positions. I'm gonna shoot off the barricade, I'm gonna shoot off a tank trap, and then maybe I'll shoot off like a skills tree or something, a couple of rounds from each one. We're not too worried about hitting the target. What I wanna show you guys very specifically is how the rifle recoils and how my body reacts compared to the silencer versus a muzzle brake. Okay, let's head down to the range and see what happens, shall we? Before we actually get to the shooting, I wanna give you a quick rundown of this rifle. MDT ESS, carbon fiber four and carbon trim here, their RKRL here, my RKRL there, Razor four and a half to 27, MDT one piece mount, MDT vertical grip, folding stock. It's got literally, uh, push the button again, close that, just make sure everything's fine. We've got all the bells and whistles in one package. Massive shout out for MDT for sponsoring today's video and making this possible. If you want to shop chassis systems such as this one or any of their other line, head over to mdttech.com. Okay, let's make some noise. Now, very importantly, we're not gonna be adjusting for POI shift due to the differences in the muzzle brake versus the suppressor. I'm just pretty much gonna hope it works, which it should. Uh, I'm not gonna worry too much about getting the timing one hundo, but that's pretty much, just gonna hand tighten that. Okay, bolt open, let's run that again. Three rounds, and let's see if we can spot the difference. Holy moly. So the camera angles we've chosen is very intentional in this video. I want you guys to 100% see me from sort of my three o'clock or nine o'clock position. Because seeing what a rifle or a, or a brake or a suppressor is doing with regards to recoil, it really could be deceiving if you're looking at it from an odd angle. So 100% from the side and uh, Anyway, let's run the barricade. I'm gonna shoot it from the top and not the bottom because that bottom position is basically the same position as we would have had on our tank trap. And then maybe we'll go down to our favorite tree and see what we can do. Okay, ear pro on. This time we're gonna start with the muzzle brake just because that was what we ended with. And then we will swap it back as the last time. I'm just gonna put the suppressor down. Okay, three, two, one, yeet. Let's bogey. Bogey doogie. Pull the shot. Wonderful. Pro shooter pulls a shot. Title of the video. <laughs> uh, guys, it's very important when you go out shooting or, or I guess anything we do in life not to take yourself too seriously. Um, it's, and oftentimes I read the comments and there's a lot of people that take themselves super seriously. I take 
what I do very seriously, but I absolutely don't take myself seriously. I have removed the magazine in case you're wondering that I'm doing it like that. Um, pretty, pretty remarkable that we don't have a big point of impact shift. That plate is so shot up, I've got no idea where I'm hitting it. When I'm hitting it, I did, however, see that I pulled that one slightly to the left. Okay, we're on. I'm being very generous with the amount of rounds we're shooting. Okay, so we should be able to do three from here and then I think one or two from our next position. Okay, three, two, go. Um, I'm just gonna pull that one and, oops. Right, so very important for this test to be accurate, I'm putting the same amount of shoulder pressure into my rifle every time. I'm not changing anything. I'm using my normal natural point of aim in order to engage these targets to show you guys a fair reflection of what is actually happening with regards to recoil. We've got a little bit of wind, so I'm gonna hold a little bit to the right. Woo! So we just had a super cool flyby and I also forgot about that round that I dropped on the ground. So we've got two for each position. I'm gonna shoot it from here on our tree. It's a little bit unstable and these positions are sort of always awkward because you kind of have to, you kind of have to do like a squat in between of a squat or whatever the case. So I thought this could be a really good representation of what we're dealing with. We're gonna go suppressor first and then end things off with the muzzle brake and then we'll review the footage together. Now, I'm trying, I'm not gonna use any gamer tactics to grab onto the tree and to the rifle. I'm just gonna shoot it as, to try and give you a better recoil representation because there are some techniques that I could employ here to basically eliminate the recoil on this specific position. We could do a separate video on something like that down the line. Right, mag out. Where did that brass go? Wow, how did I throw it over there? Remind me that there's a piece of brass in like a super dodgy position over there, please. If I don't pick it up, in the, I'm just gonna get it now. Here with me. Brief interruption. Guys, I spent the whole day out filming this video for you and putting it together. Never mind editing it. So if you enjoyed these videos, you find them helpful at all, please click down below and check out our Patreon community. Just swing by there, see what it's about. We've got some cool things. We have a trip planned for the top tier guys in 2021. It's super cool. It's an amazing community. They actually came together last night because of how well the channels did and they bought me and my wife Shushi, which is unbelievable. So just check that out. If you find these videos helpful at all, I would, um, it would be amazing for me if you checked it out and you wanted to support the channel. If not, just make sure you drop a like and a comment. That is another way you can support the channel. Okay, cool. Let's get back. Let's get back to business, shall we? Yeah, that's kind of good. <laughs> okay. Two rounds, muzzle break. Dodgy tree situation. Let's go! Bostock position. How do you think that went? Which one would you give it to? Let's jump back to the studio and review our footage, shall we? And just like that, we're back in the studio. So since we got back, I've actually reviewed all the footage and I actually went through the footage frame by frame, manually counting every single frame. And what I used as a guideline was how long it takes my body, not just the rifle, because oftentimes the rifle will shift back that little bit, your shoulder will give that little bit, and the rifle will stay in the same place, but actually how much energy gets transferred over into my body. Now on average, between all the, we what, we fired, eight shots with each rifle. On average, it took 
the muzzle brake 4.3 frames to settle down where my body doesn't start moving back. Now to put that into perspective, we're shooting at 24.98 frames per second. So basically 25 frames per second. So we're talking split seconds for my body to actually start moving back. And on the silencer or suppressor, whatever you want to call it, it took 5.7 frames for my body to start stop moving back. Now the other thing I noticed was is the amount of movement in my body. Now this is why I actually shoot a muzzle brake in competitions all the time because I do feel it settles. It's more like a it's like a snap and it's over and you can re-engage your target. Whereas with the suppressor, I almost feel like it's more like a it's a longer push. I would love to do this test with a high speed camera and actually count more frames and see more detail, but those cameras are ridiculously expensive and we unfortunately don't have access to that. So there are some advantages and disadvantages to running a muzzle brake. For me, running a muzzle brake on the front of your rifle obviously makes the package a little bit smaller, which in this case is a good thing because it makes your rifle more maneuverable as you transition through barricades, tank traps, apertures, whatever the case may be. I find that a more maneuverable rifle is a more usable rifle and you're able to use your time more efficiently uh, because you can get away with making smaller movements to get in and out of spaces. The other thing, as I said earlier, for me, the recoil impulse is more of a snap and it's over and I can move on to my next task. Whereas with the suppressor, I feel it's more of a push and there's more effort required to manage the rifle. Now, in this case, we were shooting a 6.5 Creedmoor, so not a whole lot of recoil to deal with off the bat, but that's kind of a very popular caliber at the moment for precision rifle style shooting. One thing to note while we were actually making this video, this morning, I took this optic off that rifle and put the razor on that rifle because it wouldn't clear the carbon fiber forend. And when I got to the range, I was like, oh crap, I didn't have any paper. So basically the whole video, we only dropped one shot during the making of this film. And I was shooting the whole video on a field zero. So I basically zeroed the rifle into dirt. And then we made the video with that. So it goes to show with our style of shooting, you don't need 100% zero. I mean, I hit almost every single round. I just pulled that one off to the left. So to summarize for me, I prefer a muzzle brake. The other thing you have to keep in mind with the suppressor, if you're shooting a lot, it gets really warm. That's why I'm running the suppressor cover on, because if you don't have one of those and you look through your scope after five, six rounds in quick succession, you'll actually start seeing the mirage boiling up from your, from your suppressor. And it's gonna interfere big time with your vision and the, the sight picture you get when you look through your scope. Now, I didn't know that when I started out shooting and when somebody explained it to me, it was like, oh, wow. Because I initially thought that, listen, this optic I bought is a complete piece of trash. But it was just my suppressor on my Ruger Precision Rifle getting super warm. So I really enjoyed doing this test for you guys. I hope the footage that I've shown you, you could sort of draw your own conclusion. Let me know what you prefer in the comments down below. Do you shoot a silencer, muzzle brake? Obviously, the other thing with the silencer is it's going to be a lot quieter for everybody around you. It's still not hearing safe. You cannot shoot a suppressor on a center fire rifle without ear protection. It's one thing to go hunting and shoot one or two rounds maybe, but to shoot a match with no ear pro, it's going to be a no go. And the other thing is most of your competitors will more than likely shoot a muzzle brake anyway. Now I'd be very tempted and I'd really like to do one of those silent night style matches where everybody has to run a suppressor. Maybe that is something we could do in South Africa down the line. Guys, if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, please do consider subscribing down below. And for those of you that are subscribed, make sure you have hit the notification bell. You can watch my favorite videos over here. And if you want to support the channel on Patreon, which we'd really appreciate, click down here and unlock some awesome bonus content. Until next time, I'll see you guys later. Stay safe and have an awesome day. See ya.